Let's go across to our guests joining us. Anila Singh of the BJP with us, Meeta Chakravarti from the Congress Party, also Meghna Panthes, author with us on the larger import of this women's reservation bill. Anila Singh, let me begin with you. A lot of political parties have been questioning both the intent and the timing of this bill brought in by the BJP. One, at the fag end of your second term. And secondly, the intent, because the reservations will not kick in any time before 2029 general elections at least. How would you respond on both those charges? <clears throat> my ranam to all better late than never i know one thing and i know one thing for sure that since 1996 this battle is on mm -hmm. though i will say that that this battle is forever for any woman it is not new we have to fight for our survival and history is the witness but the thing is we are fighters we had uh, been fighting for our rights we are fighting for the rights and in the future also we will keep on fighting because it is the matter of our existence and i will say so that in 2010 hmm. when the uh, when this bill was passed in rajya sabha what happened what happened why didn't it pass in lok sabha what upa government was doing in which pressure ms sonia gandhi came and this bill was never ever got passed in Lok Sabha. So it is very easy to uh, point out figure, finger. It is very easy to criticize and it is very difficult for opposition to uh, stand together and uh, vote for something which the opposition has the stood with you for the empowerment of women no let's be Sorry? fair the opposition has stood with you yesterday in Lok Sabha 454 out of the 456 uh, parliamentarians present voted in favor only two parliamentarians voted against it so the opposition has wholeheartedly supported you but they have of course questioned whether this uh, you know uh, reservation could have kicked in sooner but I'll come back to you. Let me go across to Meeta Chakraborty as well. In fact, the, the converse also applies to parties like yourself, Meeta, the Congress party leading the opposition. That one, um, you know, even during your tenure of the UPA, you couldn't ever pass this bill. Your leaders accepted that there wasn't enough consensus even within the UPA alliance partners. Secondly, there was no OBC quota at that time. You rejected those demands as the government, uh, even though you raised them today. Uh, and the question that arises is that while you support this bill, you are also seeking to undercut the government's efforts when they should deservedly get the credit for not just getting the bill, but also getting it passed. Okay, good evening to all your viewers and good evening to my fellow panelists as well, co-panelists. Uh, first of all, yes, it has been a long-standing demand of the Congress party to get the woman reservation bill passed. If you look at the history as how in the panchayat level and urban local bodies as how uh, the reservation was introduced, uh, the first the idea was introduced by uh, late uh, former Prime Minister uh, Rajiv Gandhi ji and then later implemented by P.V. Narsimha Rao ji and how we managed to get it passed in 2010 during UPA 2. Yes, we didn't have the numbers, we could not build up the consensus, that's a fact and we failed to pass it in the Lok Sabha. Hmm. Now, Having said that, in 2017, in 2018, our former Congress presidents, both Mrs. Sonia Gandhi ji and Mr. Rahul Gandhi, had written multiple times to the Prime Minister of the day requesting for this bill to be tabled and to be passed. Even when this bill was being tabled, we have, we have emphasized and we have said that we are going to give our unconditional support to the passage of this bill. And we have voted in favor of this bill. Hmm. So first of all, yes, we stand by this bill. We have always wanted the woman reservation to become a reality. And yes, as a responsible political organization, we are well within our rights to give suggestion back to the government of the day. And that's exactly what we have done. No, no, it's not about suggestions. No, one second, Meeta, I'll just come in. It's not about suggestions. One, uh, there's a U-turn by the Congress party on the OBC position. When you did not include OBC quota, when you were trying to build this, uh, uh, bring this bill in, of course, questions will be asked why you are raising it today as if the go this government is unwilling to do so when you yourself are uh, quoted legal issues as far as implementing an OBC quota within the women's reservation is concerned. So it's not about suggestions. It's about the fact that the Congress seems a little bit uncomfortable with the fact that while you may have been the one leading the charge on a women's reservation bill, ultimately it has happened under a Modi government. No, not at all. In fact, we wanted it to be passed a long time back. So we, sure. we go back 
fundamental query that you, you had a brute majority in the Lok Sabha for the past nine years. Why did it take you nine long years to uh, table this bill? Having said that, our concerns are twofold. One is why link it to delimitation? Bear in mind, delimitation is not going to be a very simple, straightforward exercise. We already have a lot of misgivings in the southern part of the country hmm. where they think that they will be in, a, in, in, the, in the wrong uh, receiving end of this delimitation exercise. And we have, uh, it is not going to be a very straightforward and simple exercise. So now we do not even know if this can be implemented in 2029. Forget about 2024. We know it's not going to be implemented before the next general election. Perhaps it will only get implemented before 2034. So, I, are not you not convinced by the government's arguments? Period. The Home Minister has spoken can, on this. The I, government has I given an argument. Yes, once again, I want to ask you, are you not convinced with the government's pre uh, arguments on why the delimitation is necessary? No, it, it has to be done in a time-specific manner. First of all, even without delimitation, this reservation could have been implemented. See, the percentage is fixed. It's 33%. Delimitation will possibly lead to greater number of parliamentarian constituencies. So if 33% of this number or 33% of an increased number, the percentage of reservation remains a constant. No, I believe the government has late, made a different point. The government late, has made a point that the census is required and a delimitation is required to trigger so and to kick in not, any more why reservations. Not a, why not have a specific timeline? Timeline, post, okay. Let post, Anila post, Singh post, respond to that, then I have to go across to Meghna Pant as well. Anila ji, the same question I asked you as well. Yes. Shivani, I want to make two true. quick points here. It is a rhetoric from opposition. Are bhai, aap logo ne saade no saal kya kiya? What you were doing for nine and a half years? Why you were not able to pass uh, women reservation bill? We had asked you that uh, you, if you bring this bill, we are going to give you unconditional support. Mm -hmm. Let me ask Miss Mita here that have you ever raised your voice? Your means your political party or the your or your allied partners. For once, you have done dharna protest walkouts for Adani, Ambani, Pegasus, Rafael, and so many matters. Not for once. Can I answer that? Not for once, Ms. Sonia Gandhi or Mr. Rahul Gandhi or any of the political party leaders of yours, they did protest. They did what walk out on women issue. Of course not. So do not try to preach us. No, no, but the delimitation issue. And secondly, sec, uh, yes. This is mandatory as Honorable Minister and Honorable uh, Party President. They both have conveyed, conveyed that why it is necessary. Now, you have to go to the Supreme Court and go to the collapse of the Supreme Court. What is the benefit? Congress Party, the UP Alliance, in 2014, they had given reservation to Jats in center. Then what happened? It was not done properly. It got challenged in the Supreme Court and the uh, reservation was stretched away from Jats. So they, we do not want anything which can be challenged in the Supreme Court. And then it collapses. Okay. Whatever we want to do, we want to do it in a very proper way. No, no, so once again. Can you give 10 seconds to revert to that? Yes, Meeta ji, very quickly, uh, I okay, want to go so across to Meeta also. We have written multiple times to the Prime Minister of the Day requesting for this passage of the bill. We absolutely stand committed to the bill and that's the reason why we want it to be implemented right now and not given a future vague promise of its implementation some 10 years down the line. Number one. Number two, yes, we have asked for quota for quota. I think we are well within our rights to give that suggestion to the uh, to the uh, government of the day. But that has not stopped us from voting in favor of this bill. Fair so enough. let's be very clear. We have given two suggestions and those two suggestions to only make this bill a stronger bill, make it a stronger representation of women coming from different strata of okay, the Okay, I'll come back to the OBC issue uh, in some time because, you know, we've discussed this over the last couple of days. I want to go across to